Okay, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Charleston Bridge Information Session. We're thrilled to have you here with us tonight. My name is Mindy Malley. I'm from the College of Charleston. I'm the Assistant Vice President for First Year and Bridge Student Services. And I'll be with you during your session tonight and going through a few uh, things about the Charleston Bridge Program. Also with me, I uh, have two of my colleagues with me. I'm going to let them introduce themselves and then we'll get right into our uh, session tonight. Uh, Stephanie? Hi, everyone. I see some folks are still joining us, so we'll uh, see that counter going up. Great to see so many folks join us tonight. I'm Stephanie Allwater. I'm the Director of Orientation here at the College of Charleston, and I'm also an instructor in the Bridge Success class that students take um, when they are part of the Bridge program. And then I'll turn it over to Katie. Hey everyone, I'm Katie Hovis, and I actually work at Trident Technical College as the Charleston Bridge Liaison. So I'm going to be helping you through navigating Trident Technical College through this process. And in addition to being a wonderful colleague at Trident Technical College, Katie's a proud College of Charleston graduate, um, which we love that too. So let's get right into our session. We're going to go through some information about the Charleston Bridge Program. Uh, first of all, I want to say congratulations uh, on your offer to participate in this program. And I'm going to give you some information, a few details about it. And then after we are finished with the slides, um, we will uh, do some uh, Q&A. So put your questions in the Q&A chat of this, and uh, we will try to answer all of your questions. And hopefully by the end, we will see many deposits coming in to join us at the College of Charleston this fall. So first of all, Charleston Bridge, um, it's a different way to earn your College of Charleston degree, meaning it's a different path of getting into the College of Charleston. Um, it's a unique program. Um, many of our bridge programs in South Carolina are for one year, uh, but Charleston Bridge is a one semester program. So if you do well this fall, you'll be offered admissions to the College of Charleston in the spring. And primarily the mission of the program is, is supporting our first year students to make a successful transition to college. I mean, that's our mission for all of our students. But with Charleston Bridge, you'll have the support of um, our wonderful Charleston Bridge staff. And again, the program, we started the program in 2017 and uh, it's a partnership between College of Charleston and Trident Technical College. Um, for those not familiar with Trident Technical College, that's also here in Charleston, South Carolina. Um, and uh, it's an opportunity for students to live and learn here at the College of Charleston. I'm sure you're wondering, well, what makes this bridge program so special besides the wonderful people that you'll be working with and our students here? Uh, as I mentioned earlier, it is one semester. Uh, you are enrolled in full-time hours, which is usually 12 to 17 credit hours, and these are Trident Technical College classes, and they're taught by Trident Technical College faculty, but the classes meet on the College of Charleston uh, campus in downtown Charleston. Um, the uh, Charleston Bridge courses that you take um, will count as earned transfer credits uh, towards general education requirements here at the College of Charleston or major requirements, depending on what you might take. Another cool thing is that you actually live on campus in College of Charleston Residence Hall with College of Charleston students. Um, we do have some residence halls selected for Charleston Bridge. Um, these include Barry Residence Hall, Liberty Residence Hall, or McConnell Hall, um, which these halls are very large residence hall and they have a high uh, first year student population. And it'll be a mixture of College of Charleston and Charleston Bridge students in those halls. And of course, you'll also have a meal plan that you can use at um, several of our campus dining facilities here. Of course, uh, being in Charleston Bridge, it makes it easy for you to meet other students because um, one, you'll be enrolled in classes with many of these students and also you'll be living on the same floor of the residence hall with students participating in the program. So that makes, uh, you know, forming study groups easy and just easier to meet people. But you'll have friends in, in the program as well as outside of the program. Uh, you'll also uh, have access to College of Charleston academic and student support services. Um, you can go to events, athletic events, go Cougars, 
and um, access to any of the College of Charleston campus facilities. Uh, the Trident Technical College faculty that are teaching here on our campus, they have um, offices on the College of Charleston campus and uh, office hours to meet with you. So if you need to talk to your professor about a class, um, they're here and available. And you have a great support network, uh, which includes the Trident Technical College faculty, Parsons of Charleston Bridge staff. Uh, you also have a peer mentor that's assigned to you that'll be reaching out to you. The peer mentor is a successful College of Charleston student that knows the ropes. So they'll be available to help you. And they will also be taking part. Uh, they'll be like a co-instructor to your success seminar. And we'll talk more about the success seminar, but um, actually Stephanie mentioned that she is one of our seminar instructors. Um, and that course is just offered to help you uh, make a successful transition. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, you'll have access to campus services and activities. So of course our library going to uh, College of Charleston athletic events, um, campus recreation services and participating in those type of activities or intramural sports. You can use our Career Center, um, Center for Student Learning, which is our academic support and tutoring, walk-in labs, uh, clubs and organizations. You can join those. Um, we have a counseling center, um, Cougar Excursion, which is a leadership program that's in uh, August before school starts. If you wanted to take part in that, um, you could do that as well. Of course, dining. Uh, George Street Fitness Center is our gym and um, participating in those fitness opportunities that they have through that. Um, of course, public safety is uh, available on the campus 24-7, but they also do bicycle and computer registration. And we offer a Cougar shuttle, 11 p to 3 a.m., seven nights a week. That's just around the peninsula. They're not going to take you to Somerville, but they'll get you around the peninsula in the evening if you need to do that. Um, we have, uh, we have programming in the residence halls and we have resident assistants that are living on each floor of the residence hall. So they would be available to support you as well as public safety in the residence hall. Um, also uh, student health services, student life, and then weeks of welcome events. So the first six weeks of the fall, when you get here, we're gonna have a whole bunch of activities going on for you to get to know the campus and to get to know other students and it's gonna be big fun. I know you can't wait, right? Okay, so the requirements, what do I have to do? So the Charleston Bridge Program requirements, four things that you, that you would need to do in order to be admitted to the College of Charleston in the spring. First one is to earn a minimum of 12 credit hours. Piece of cake. You're already going to be enrolled in 12 to 17 credit hours. So you got that under control, earning a 2.6 cumulative GPA. I know you can do that too. So earning the 2.6, um, attending the success seminars. So that'll start the second week of class. They're on Monday at 530. Um, and don't worry, we'll send you plenty of reminders. And I'm going to get it. We're going to give you the snazzy, you can't see it maybe, but a snazzy planner that we're going to give you so you can put the dates for every seminar you're going to have and all the other fun stuff that you're doing in your planner. Um, and then we want you to use the Center for Student Learning, which I mentioned earlier. I'm just asking for you to go one time because if you go once, you're going to keep going because it's going to be helpful. Um, it's going to help you be successful here at the college and then you're going to use it all the time and it's going to be wonderful. So that's only requirements. You meet those four requirements, then you can be admitted in the spring. So I'm sure you're saying, well, how many people get admitted in the spring? Well, we've been going since 2017. And you can see the numbers here. We started out with, you know, in 2017, we started with a lot of students. And then we kind of felt like, well, 130 was a good number. So that's my maximum program participants for this fall is 130 students. So get those deposits in. And the first 130 I get are the first uh, the 130 that we're going to take into the program. Um, so the um, as far as being admitted in the spring, it's run around 65 to 72 percent. But then last year, I got this group and 82 percent got in for spring. This year, I'm expecting that 90 percent to 100 percent are getting in. So 
that's great. So it's it's gone up each year um, as the quality of our students have gone up each year too. So it's very exciting to see. And now we're starting to see graduates from the program. So seeing students graduate from the 2017 and 2018 groups that graduated with a College of Charleston degree. That's probably one of the most uh, rewarding parts of my job. Okay, so here's your summer to-do list. All right, so you're gonna do Charleston Bridge. Here's what you need to do. You're gonna check your College of Charleston and Trident uh, Technical College email frequently because we like to email. So we'll email you during the summer. Katie's gonna email you about Trident Tech stuff. Me and Stephanie are gonna email you about College of Charleston stuff. So once you put down that deposit, you're gonna get um, information sent from our Office of Admissions and it's gonna say, here's your College of Charleston email address. And then the emails will start coming. Now, also financial aid. So, and Katie may can address something about this later, but we want you to submit any financial aid documents and that information is coming from Trident Technical College because uh, they're doing the financial aid part. But here's something cool. Trident Tech's offering free tuition this fall. I know, it's crazy, right? You, but you can qualify. You just have to fill out the FAFSA application. The FAFSA is the free application for federal student aid. Um, and you fill that out and uh, you'll check, they'll check your eligibility for that. And, you know, so then you're just paying for your housing meal plan, you know, books, any incidentals that you might have, um, that kind of thing. You're also going to register for orientation. So uh, Trident Tech will have a virtual orientation. Uh, we will have an in-person orientation on the College of Charleston campus. So you're going to do that. You have transcripts from high school. So once you graduate, which will be another wonderful day, you're going to send transcripts to both of us. Um, and if you've got any college credits, those transcripts also need to be sent. Um, on the Charleston Bridge website, which I have the link at the very end of this, and we can put it in the chat too. Um, we have fall course descriptions. So these are the courses that we think um, we're going to be offering this fall. So these are the courses that you'll be registering for. for. Um, and like I said, all of these will transfer to the College of Charleston. Um, an academic advisor from Trident Tech is going to call you. Um, probably It'll be before orientation, so it'll be probably early June. And they're going to have a discussion with you about what classes you want to take this fall. Of course, it'll be helpful if you read the course descriptions before you have this discussion. Um, also, you're going to get a College of Charleston ID because you need that card to get in your residence hall and to get in the athletic events and all the fun stuff you're going to do at the college. So um, we're going to send you some instructions about submitting a picture for your ID card. And uh, you'll have what's called a Cougar card. That's the name of our ID card. Uh, and we're going to, so and we talked about virtual orientation and um, in-person orientation at College of Charleston. We do need health and immunization forms. Um, those are sent to the college's student health services. Um, and those forms are needed by all of our students um, before you move into the residence hall and go to class. So that's very important. And then you're going to also hear from campus housing. Once you've done the housing meal plan application and your residence hall set, they're going to be communicating with you about um, what time do you want to move into the residence hall, um, which will be in August. So that'll be fun. Mindy, can I mention one quick tip? Certainly. There it is. I was just going to mention the important date of, of May 1, but actually there's a little trick to this. You actually need to have your deposit in by like April 28th so that you can get your housing signed up by May 1. It does take a day to process. So we put May 1 out there, but the little insider tip is if you want to lessen your stress level, get that deposit in by April 28th so then you can get that housing all in and all taken care of by May 1. Yeah, good point. Good point. Yes. You, um, so get that deposit in. The sooner you get your deposit in, we need about 48 hours to process things. So then you can fill out your housing and meal plan application, but it takes a little time. So get it in by then. Then you can do your meal plan application and register for um, the College of Charleston's orientation. 
Um, then send transcripts. It has July 1, but the sooner you can get all of this information to the institutions, the better. I would do it earlier than that. As soon as you have them, send them. Um, August 1 is the, you have to make some kind of payment plan arrangements with Trident Tech or pay the fall bill in full. Um, any bill payment uh, and financial aid, all of that's going through Trident Technical College. So once you submit your deposit and your housing meal plan application to the College of Charleston, um, from then on, Trident Technical College will be receiving um, any uh, payments at that point. But if you're admitted in spring, we're happy to take your money. So, and then uh, I've already mentioned submitting your health and immunization forms. Um, as soon as you have those available, I would go ahead and get it done. So yes, here are some dates, but the sooner you get it done, the less stress you'll have when you're uh, thinking about, oh, what do I need to move into the residence hall? So, and then finally, um, that's us. Yeah, this is uh, so Stephanie and me and, and Carly Pruitt, she's our associate director. She works with the British program. She's also a success seminar instructor as well. Um, we all three of us are in the office of new student programs and new student programs is kind of a place you would come um, if you needed help um, throughout your time in the Charleston Bridge program. So that's us. Um, if you have questions about Bridge 2, a general email, it's at bridge at cfc.edu. Um, and we're open 835. Our website for Charleston Bridge is at the bottom, and I'm sure Stephanie's um, putting that in the chat as well, but that pretty much has all the information about Charleston Bridge as well. And then that's my final slide right there. I hope everybody's going to join us um, this fall because we're going to have a great time. And then I'll see all of you in the spring. All right. All right, so I've stopped sharing slides and we will see, uh, what do we have in the chat? The We've had a few, few questions about financial aid, um, which uh, Katie's been uh, uh, answering to folks. There was a question about, do you need to, um, if you live in Charleston area, are you required to live on campus um, for the program? Um, yes, you are. Uh, we do want you to live on campus. Someone asked, could they, if they have a friend who's not in the bridge program living in McConnell, could they live with them? We we do in the first in the fall semester like you to live with the other bridge students. And we have found that is something that feedback from our students. We actually have a leadership council, which you can be part of and give us feedback. They have said they really liked being with other students in the program. They just were good accountability partners and and keeping people on track. So um, if you bridge over. Then. Um, uh, yes, um, you do, um, you could make a room change and things like that. So, um, so here we got, we got things coming in the, in the Q and a here. Um, all right. I see some of them. So I'll, I'll them? Okay. You want to answer some right. there and I'll type them just so they're sort of recorded also. So, right. Um, so are you guaranteed admission, uh, in the spring if you meet the fall requirements? Yep. Uh, yes. If you meet those requirements, uh, you're pretty much admitted unless there are um, behavioral issues or things that occur in the residence hall um, or illegal activities, things like that, that a student may not get admitted. But if you meet those four requirements and you're a good student citizen, you should be fine. Um, orientation dates. Uh, I'm sure Stephanie's answering that, but June 28th for uh, Trident is virtual. And that's 10 o'clock, right, Katie? 10 a.m. And I'm sure you'll get a link to that as well to for that event. And then ours at the College of Charleston is June 30th. Um, and I met, and this is an approximate time. We'll send you more info, but I'm imagining like nine-ish, nine to three thirty um, on June 30th at the College of Charleston. And uh, lunch is provided because I want you to experience Liberty Fresh Food, which is the name of our our main dining facility. I'm going to give you and any of your family members that come to orientation, you all can eat there. And it's good food. It's all you can eat. You can't spend all day in there eating, but you can have lunch in there. Um, move in and classes begin date. Um, the move in date, I think, is August 18th through the 20th. Am I right, Stephanie? On that? Yep, 18th. So that Friday, Saturday. And I think they try to get it done within those two days. Um, yep. 
Um, and so they work that out in regards to what day you sign up for um, and when that all opens up. Um, and then uh, classes will start on Tuesday, August 22nd. Yes, I'm glad you're asking about when classes start. Because that'll be a wonderful time. These, yes, the 22nd. Um, declaring a major. So, yes, in the spring when you're admitted to the College of Charleston, you can declare a major. We have a program of study management system, so you can declare that major online. Or if you're not ready to do that yet, it's okay. You can explore a little bit and then do it. Um, when you're admitted in the spring, you're going to have an assigned academic advisor from the Academic Advising and Planning Center, and they're going to help you register for spring classes, and that'll happen in December. And then you can talk about majors with that advisor. Once you've declared a major, they'll assign you an advisor from that academic department. And then, you know, you might decide, hey, I want to change a major. You can do that too. Sometimes that happens and that's fine. Um, I don't know, bringing a car. Well, no. What, how many hours do you need? To well, you, you can't, you, you can bring a car. No one <laughs> yeah, can bring a car. Yeah. You just can't park it on our campus. So, um, and there are on, um, there are, um, other camp, other places that you can, um, work with a private garage or some lots around that you can pay for it. It's not cheap. If you've ever been to Charleston, you know, staying, you know, being in a garage isn't cheap. Parking's not cheap. But if that's something that you need, um, that's something uh, that our parking services office has some alternative parking um, places on campus on in the peninsula that will rent out spaces. So can't bring it on campus actually until you're until you've earned, I think it's about 60, 60 hours, hours, I believe. Um, but you do um, need to um, you you do have that as an option. So, um, but again, I said can't not put campus. We're not saying you can't bring it. You just wouldn't have on campus parking. And all of our classes, they're walkable. I mean, you won't need a car to get to class. You won't need your bike to ride to your bike to class. Um, and as a College of Charleston student, you'll have an ID card that you can use for the car to shuttle, which is the bus system here um, in Charleston. Um, so you can ride it for free using that. But um, really, most of our students find a car isn't necessary since you can get around. Um, we do have some classes, which this won't happen in the fall, but some classes in, at our Harbor Walk location, which is a couple miles from here. And they have a shuttle that goes from here to that area. Again, that's not something you need to worry about in fall, but that is available. Um, Mindy, I got the next one. I took care of that part, Lisa. About the certain type of laptop. I, we, um, I'm putting that, I'll put that link up. Um, yeah, we have a link. We don't have any specific, but um, we do have some just suggestions of minimum standards and things like that. So um, I will, uh, I'll pull that link right now and add that in uh, the answer that I'll post in a minute. Yeah, yeah, but it is, uh, we recommend that you have a, a laptop um, if possible. Uh, there's some mention about dual credit classes and transferring in and the grades. So just like your Charleston Bridge classes, um, the credit hours are going to transfer in, um, but not the grade, not the GPA. Um, so those will count, but the, the dual enrollment classes or those things won't count towards your Charleston Bridge requirements. Um, we're just looking at what you do here at the College of Charleston in the fall semester. So if you earn credit hours, yes, those can transfer in, but they won't count towards the program. Um, Katie, there was some there was a question. I don't know if you got it or not. It was about using the Hope and Life Scholarship for. Um, you want to answer that question? I might have yeah. lost. It. Sure. So basically, um, to get the free tuition, what you need to do is fill out the FAFSA and we're going to apply any aid that you get from federal or state. So if you do get those, that's going to apply. Um, and then we're going to make up the difference if there is a difference. So yes, that does go towards the free tuition. Um, and it you wouldn't be using it for room and board. Um, but if you get other things, obviously you can use those towards it. Yep. Um, 
So as far as there was a question about program costs in the spring, um, I think, Stephanie, I have a link to that and that program cost that bridge on the bridge site. There's a link to our spring um, tuition at the College of Charleston. Um, we will not be able to offer free tuition at the college in the spring, but we'd still love to have you here. And, and just a little note on the costs. Our costs actually for CFC haven't even been set for next year. So this is just giving you a, a ballpark idea of what spring um, may be. So. Yes. I'll put that link in. Yes. Um, there was some questions about um, adding information to your admissions file, such as recommendations and things like that, um, that would perhaps um, make admissions take a second look at your file. Um, again, that would be, um, I think you should probably talk directly with our Office of Admissions on that. Um, and they can let you uh, know about that process. Um, next steps. Yes, yeah, so just to clarify, the next steps is, yes, pay the deposit, then you're gonna get information from, you'll get a College of Charleston and Trident Tech email, and then you'll start hearing from Trident Tech about financial aid, so yeah. <laughs> I'm going to give you one little note. Don't forget to put try to and CFC on your FAFSA. Yeah. So you won't hear if they're if it's not on there. So please make mm -hmm. sure that if you've done your FAFSA and maybe you put CFC, please make sure you go back in and put Trident also. And I also want to say there's a little bit of a lag time between when you pay your deposit and when we get your information from CFC. So you may get all your information from CFC first, and then a week or a week and a half later, you will get it from us. So, and if you get some sort of, we had a mailing go out um, in air last week. Uh, to some bridge students that said to use our Navigate platform. If you get that, you do not need to use the Navigate platform. Only the emails from me, um, you'll want to pay attention to um, and financial aid, obviously. Um, but if you get a letter saying to use the Navigate platform, just disregard that. We're trying to figure out how, how that actually got out in our system. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> thanks. And if you're unsure, just, just contact us. <laughs> we'll be happy to clarify anything. Um, so there's a question about uh, living on campus. Do so you have to live the full year? Well, the housing contract um, that you signed for College of Charleston would be for the full year. So if you're admitted, um, you would live on campus fall and spring. Um, if there's, if you wanted to change rooms or maybe change a hall, and if there was availability, that could be a possibility in the spring. Um, so if you're admitted in the spring, it would be the contract would be for a, a full year for you to live on campus. Um, the deadline to commit to the Charleston Bridge program is, well, as Stephanie mentioned earlier, May 1, but I would get that deposit in um, in April, that last, you know, um, in April in order for it to get processed and make sure that you're in there. Um, and we will take the first 130 students that we um, we get. So, um, of course, I'd like you to deposit tonight, but I'm not going to say the deadline is tonight. But as soon as possible, of course. Um, there was a question about participating in Spectra. Um, so Spectra would not be available to students participating in the bridge program. And there are a few things that you wouldn't be able to do um, initially. Um, in the fall, you would not be able to participate in the Spectra program, which is offered in the summer, um, or you wouldn't be able to rush a sorority fraternity in the fall, but you could do that in the spring. Um, and uh, you wouldn't be able to work on uh, campus or um, receive a stipend or some kind of payment from College of Charleston. Um, but you can do that in the spring. And we employ a lot of students on campus. Um, we have a lot of students that work uh, with Stephanie and I in these student programs. Um, and uh, you wouldn't be able to take like a, a College of Charleston class um, until you're admitted in the spring. Other than that, you can, you can be in clubs and organizations. You can go to the gym and everything else. So you'll be involved in plenty of things. Um, so about the spring semester and the financial aid. So 
as we mentioned earlier, when you complete the FAFSA, it will FAFSA will allow you to add like five different school codes. And what that means is all of those school schools will get your financial aid information. So in the event that you do go to that institution, they'll be able to pull in that information and award you financial aid. So um, if you um, get financial aid uh, with Trotia and College of Charleston, when you're admitted in spring, we communicate with our financial aid office here and say, here are the students that are admitted, which is gonna be all 130 of you. And um, then they can pull in your information and then you'll get your financial aid award. So it won't have to be redone, but you'll get a new financial aid package from the College of Charleston and you'll be working with our financial aid office and you'll be working with our treasurer's office. So, but then again, you get to do the financial aid application every year. So you'll have the joy of doing that every year um, if you did enjoy that process. Um, every year around uh, February, it comes out, or is that right, or October, you get it every year. And every year, you know, you'll reapply for financial aid, but you won't have to redo it in the spring. <clears throat> um, there's a question. If I pay the deposit after the first 130 students, will there still be options? Call me. If you if I'm at 131, call me. I don't think it's gonna. I mean, you'll be all right. I'm gonna get you in. So don't. Let's not worry about that. Let's just pay that deposit and get in. Um. Anything else that we need to answer? Uh, I think uh, when you come to orientation you'll get a good idea, like you'll get to tour the campus, you'll get to see those residence halls. Um, we're gonna to talk to you more about the, the resources available um, at College of Charleston. Um, and you'll just get a feel for the campus and you'll meet um, College of Charleston students. We have an intern team. Um, some of our intern team are actually um, past participants of the Charleston Bridge Program. So you can ask them questions. So I think uh, both students and parents, because your families can come, um, I think you'll get a good feel for the for the folks here at the College of Charleston um, and the students as well. Okay, any other questions? It's hard for me. I'm not sure if I've answered everything or not. Um, so there's a question about um, clarifying if bridge students could not rush in the fall. That's correct. Um, because um, you're not technically admitted to the College of Charleston yet. So we want you to get admitted. And you're going to have such a, you're going to be studying and all that fun stuff you're doing in the fall. So you can do that in the spring. And I, I think sometimes when students uh, rush in the spring, they have a better idea too of like, what fraternity or sorority they want to join and the group of people they want to connect with. So sometimes that's an advantage, but I mean, you can rush at any uh, any point in the semester or if you want to wait to your second year, third year, that's a possibility too. Um, okay. Uh, have I, any other questions? I think there's one someone's asking about what's the difference of attending Trident Tech in the fall and then transferring to CFC. Well, one of the pieces has to do with just how many hours you have. Um, for a transfer student, you need to come in with a um, with 24 credit hours. So this bridge program is short, you know, giving you a, a quicker pathway into CFC um, and a chance for you to also get more familiar with campus and make those connections. Um, uh, before you would come in in the following fall. So if you go to Trident, it would be uh, two semesters or even the summer three at Trident before you would transfer into CFC the following fall. So the bridge program is a is that uh, uh, that short detour um, around that requirement because you're only required to complete that, you know, you have one semester um, with the minimum of 12 credit hours. We hope a few more, but we understand if it ends up being 12. Okay, and there was a question about are the majors and minor the same as CFC um, students for the bridge students? Well, you're not actually declaring a major or a minor yet. 
I told, um, I told them they were undeclared. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, yeah. But we still do ask you, like, when you get um, information about orientation, we're going to ask you about what you're thinking about. Because when we send this information to Katie, her advisors are going to look at it and say, oh, they're thinking about biology. Maybe this biology class we have is a good fit. Or um, they're thinking about business. Maybe this intro to business class is a good fit. So that just gives us an idea of what you're thinking about, um, but it doesn't mean you've actually declared a major or minor. Now, once you're admitted here in the spring, then you're going to have an academic advisor and you'll be able to log in and declare your major um, officially at the College of Charleston. But um, if you're on the College of Charleston's uh, website, um, you can see that we have many majors and we encourage students also to um, get a minor as well and combine those things. And so there's a lot of opportunities, different programs of study, um, different languages you can study. So um, take advantage of the opportunity to um, explore, explore new things. All right, let's see. Um, I will ask one of them, I, we have to ask our admissions friend here on this one. Um, Devin, I know this is being recorded. Are we going to be able to send this out to folks afterwards? Sorry, I had to find my unmute button. Yes, we <laughs> are recording it and we will be sending it out to anyone who is invited tonight. So be on the lookout. Thank you so much. Um, yes, and as far as help choosing a major, um, well, that's why we're here. Um, we want to help you choose a major and make um, good academic decisions. Uh, and again, there's no rush that you declare a major immediately. Um, some of these general education courses that you're taking now um, gives you an opportunity to, to explore different things. Uh, but when you're ready or you're thinking about some majors, that's a good discussion to have with your academic advisor at that point. Um, usually, you'd want to declare a major in the courses that you do well in, the courses that you enjoy. Um, so think about things that you're passionate about and uh, how that translates into a choice about your major. Um, but we do encourage students to, to come see us. Um, that's the hard part for us is getting students to come through the door, but, you know, you can find that... Uh, you can have some really valuable um, conversations with faculty and staff, and uh, that's why we're here is to help you navigate the college experience and be successful in your your academic and personal choices. So um, take advantage of that support network that I talked about earlier um, and use those people to help you be successful. Um. Okay, there is a um, question about orientation being required. Well, Steph? I just posted, you know, <laughs> it is required. You're going to have to go through some sort of orientation. Great to come on person and, you know, see everything on campus. Um, if you can't for some reason make it, please email us at bridge at cfc.edu and we'll talk about what options are there and, and when you can and what we can do about that. So, but uh, don't, you know, we don't plan to do 130 alternate orientations. So really hope you can come um, and make that time to come. And I'm probably same thing for Katie in regards to um, need to be there. So. Right. It, you know, it, it'd be great if you were there, if you can't, we'll send out a recording. Um, we'll also have a landing page with some videos for you to watch. Um, so you'll want to do that before you come. <laughs> yes, we would love to have all of you at orientation at the College of Charleston because you'll get to meet the other people that are participating in the program. I'm sure then you can probably meet roommates and sweet mates that you might have. So that'll be cool. You're also going to meet your success seminar and possibly the peer mentor that you'll have. Um, so, you know, orientation is a, a good opportunity to meet some of these key folks that will be involved in your fall semester. So I encourage you to um, clear your calendar on the 28th and the 30th um, so you can join us at the college. Um, so you can meet us too. That'll be fun. Um, let's see. Other questions? There's a question about when you pick a roommate by and um, 
I believe, and I would double check, I'll put the address for campus housing to double check with them. Um, I believe that they do something like, um, it's after the May 1 deadline, but maybe to like May 5th or 6th you have, if you need to still do the roommate thing. I did put up a, in a previous question, someone asked, how do you find roommates? And we have a, a Facebook page, a Facebook group actually, that you can do roommates. And um, I will, uh, I put it out there and I already see people starting to request to come in. I'm the one that uh, puts you in it. So give me a few minutes tonight and I'll get you in there. Some students have already jumped on. Um, and uh, are looking at that and meeting each other. Um, and, you know, I know you sort of put out all your social media access and you guys talk that way, but that is one way to kind of uh, figure that out um, in terms of that. But I'll put the um, campus housing email address in here so you guys can just double check with them. I think it's a few days after that May 1 deadline, but not too much longer because um, they got to get into room assignments and uh, having you uh, get and do that uh, for you. So real quick note on that. You may have other CFC friends who are like, hey, you know, um, I'm getting to sign up this day for my housing. Well, bridge students, we have it a little differently. You are assigned your room. And if you've gone in and picked roommates, they'll keep you together, but they do assigning for the bridge program. So a little different than what you might see the CFC students having, just to give you a heads up. If you have any friends coming in that way and you hear them having, they're going on their day to pick, you actually will be assigned your rooms. Always ask if you're unsure, bridge at cfc.edu so we can get you the right information. Lots of dates for um, apply to different groups of students. Uh, the deposit is 400 and the housing meal plan application would be $50. Um, okay. um, So if you're um, unable to find a roommate, um, not to worry. Uh, Campus Housing sends out a um, information about students and they try to pair um, roommates up um, so that you would uh, hopefully get along um, with your roommate. Um, so we will find a roommate for you if um, you don't have anybody in mind. Let's see, where do you pay the deposit? Um, I, Stephanie's gonna sending, sending the link in just a moment. We'd Stephanie's love Stephanie's going to send deposits. you the link because all of you need to be paying that deposit, right? She's going to put the link out there in the chat. Um, so, and that's also on the Charleston Ridge website as well. Um, that deposit is going to our office of admissions. And, and again, like I said, give them about 48 hours to process things before you get that email um, with your College of Charleston um, credentials. Then you can access the housing and meal plan application and you'll be in. Okay. Any other questions, Marie? No questions. No more questions? Um, well, that's great. We would spend all evening with you um, talking about Bridge, but I'm sure you have uh, things to do and deposits to make, right? Uh, so I do hope uh, all of you consider uh, College of Charleston. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, feel free uh, to reach out to us at bridge at csc.edu. Um, Katie, if you wanna put your uh, email in the chat, um, you can reach Katie at uh, Trident Tech and uh, she can help you from that end. Stephanie and I, of course, Carly is also available. Um, anything else, Stephanie, Katie, I need to mention? I don't think so. We're just excited to see the summer at orientation and ha have you on campus. Um, again, if you have any questions, Katie's put hers. Um, I'm putting our bridge email. Um, and um, too many people popping in at the same time here. <laughs> Um, and now um, I have questions. <laughs> yeah, now, yes, now you have things. So, um, but uh, uh, there you go. Um, and um, I'm not sure if you guys are seeing these. I think there's some where these are going out to may not be going to everyone, but you've heard us mention our emails. Um, Katie's email is on the bridge website. Um, chat looks a little different for what I think we're used to um, and some of our other things. So, um, uh, please uh, reach out if you have a question. Like Mindy said, don't guess, don't worry, ask. We have heard it all. We have answered it all. We have found out every answer. 
and um, we will keep doing that. So yes, most definitely. And I'm really excited about <laughs> an attendee that's already made their deposit. That's awesome. I hope all of you do that. Follow that example. And as far as working from uh, our office, new student programs, when you're attending, if you get admitted here in the fall, in the spring, maybe so. You might can be working for new student programs, orientation intern, a peer educator, many opportunities. So um, again, I, I hope to see you all. And I thank you so much for uh, joining uh, us. Uh, we really appreciate having you. And uh, again, congratulations on this uh, opportunity. Um, I hope you take the opportunity and I hope to see you um, in June or sooner if you visit our campus at any time. So thank you so much, everyone. I hope you have a good evening. See ya. <laughs>